Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to be looking at a DNA exam question, this time a much harder question. If you want to look back at my easier question video, go and try that one as well for some practice. It's at this point if you'd like to pause this video you can so you can attempt the questions before I go through how to answer it and then of course I will show you the memo. Now, if you like this kind of content and you are wanting to see more of it, I am making way more of these videos on my YouTube membership page, which is exclusively for members. There will be lots of these where I walk you through so many diversions and there's lots of practice questions. And also there are many other perks that go along with being an exclusive member on my YouTube channel. Now, this question is a little bit more challenging than the first one I have posted, and you'll see why as we make our way through the questions. Now, it says, the sequence of the amino acids in a protein molecule is coded for by DNA and RNA. And the table below shows mRNA codons and their corresponding amino acids. So just take the time to breeze your eyes over the list and see that some of them are coded for the same, even though the letters are different, the amino acid is the same, and just familiarize yourself with it. You don't need to spend too long staring at it or looking over it. Let's get into the first question. According to the table, how many codons code for phenylalanine? Now, they want to know, can you actually identify all of them? So let's go through and see. We have phenylalanine here, and we have one here, and their codes are slightly different, but they are two different codons, and so therefore, we have two. Easy answer, right? The next question says, what is the anticodon for glutamic acid? Now, if we look, glutamic acid, there's only one of them on the whole table. Let's highlight it so we can see it. There it is. And so we want the anticodon. So when we provide the anticodon, remember we are providing the uh, complementary bases. So our answer is going to be C, U, C. Remember, everybody, there is no thymine in RNA. If there is a letter T anywhere, you have done something wrong when we are looking at RNA. Let's go over to the next question. For 213, it says a section of mRNA has the following base sequences, and we are reading them left to right. The first question says, give the DNA base triplet for the last codon on this section of mRNA. So that means we need to give the DNA base for this codon over here. And so the complementary base for that should be U, G, G, right? The next question says, give the first amino acid coded for by this section of mRNA. So we go to the first codon, which is GAU, and now we're going to look for GAU in our table. So I'm going to take my highlighter and I'm going to find GAU. All right, so GAU, there it is, and that is aspartate. So our answer is going to be aspartate. Now let's move on to the next question. A mutation has occurred, which results in the following base sequence. And now look very carefully from the old sequence at the beginning over here to the new one and find the difference. And if we compare, we look backwards and forwards, our mutation is sitting over here. Now it says, describe the mutation that has occurred. Now, at this point, everybody, you may be a little bit uncomfortable answering this one because you're not so, sh not so sure about mutations just yet. I did take this from a past paper. So generally, you will have more knowledge by the time you write a question like this in the final paper. You'll have some genetics knowledge. But what they're doing is they're asking you to describe the mutation. It's only two marks. They want to know what has changed, what has happened. So... All you literally have to say is that the letter C, or our cytosine, has been replaced with the letter U, uracil. And that's all you need to say. And that'll get you your two marks because you're showing what letter has been replaced with what. Now, the next question is a tricky question. They're trying to catch you out, and you'll see what I mean now. It says... Explain the effect that the mutation described in 4.1.4a uh, will have on the resulting protein. Now, I want to show you something that's really interesting. A lot of grade 12s will just say, 
Well, it's a mutation, right? So it'll just be a different protein, a different tRNA, a different mRNA, blah, blah, blah. And therefore a different amino acid. Well, I actually want to show you something that's really interesting. And I want you to go over to the table to the left here. I want you to find A, G, C. So we can't, uh, A, G, C is surname, right? Up here, that's the original code, yes? From the first strand, up here. That's the original strand, I'm gonna highlight it. Now let's look at the copy that is mutated. Let's look for A, G, U. Find it in the table, highlight it, and look at that. They both are coding for surname. And this is a trick question, grade 12s. They're trying to catch you out. Both of these codons code for the same amino acid. And so the answer you're going to give is the mutation has no effect. The same amino acid is coded for by different codons. Therefore, the same amino acids will arrive and the same protein will arrive. Nothing has actually changed. And please be careful of these kinds of questions. Make sure you look back at the table whenever you get something like this, when it refers to a mutation and the changing of the protein structure. That's why they gave you this table in the first place. Now, the final question is name and describe. You're going to get one mark for saying the name and then five marks describing the process. And so the process occurring in the nucleus, which results in the formation of mRNA. And so what are we going to describe? Transcription. Please, please, please use your exam guideline from 2021. It's still valid. It will be valid until they do a new update in the future. So keep using it. And you must use that answer. It's a bullet pointed answer that they provide. It's basically how they write the memo. And you, you speak about how the DNA unwinds, unzips, hydrogen bonds break, um, the complementary base pairs join together, that whole thing for five marks for a total of six. Now let's have a look at the memo. Now, if you did attempt the questions, now you can go through the memo and just tick everything off and see if it all matches up to what we did. And specifically, I want to draw your attention to this answer down here, the one where we were describing our transcription. And do you see it says compulsory mark up here? That basically means you can't get that mark um, unless you actually say transcription. In other words, you will only get six out of six if you say transcription and then any other five of these points that have a tick next to them. That's what they are looking for. I also want to bring your attention to, and I've said this before in other videos, that when you do this description, specifically this one here where it says the template, please make sure that you say one strand is used as a template and not two, not both, only one. Otherwise, you won't get that tick on template. Now, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn your notifications on because I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.